In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, thank you so much to the Kids Zone people for putting on such a, a really wonderful nativity skit. And just a shout out to a very well behaved baby Jesus. Yeah. Did a great job. <laughs> um, putting on a play is a really, really wonderful mode of storytelling. And it is that time of year when in many, many places, whether they're religious or not, we see pointers to God's great story of salvation. It might be something as little angel figurines about the place or um, stars decorating things, nativity scenes in shopping centres or background music featuring carols and at a joyful Merry Christmas on the lips of most people you meet, whether they are Christian or not. And I hope and pray for us here that we may joyfully welcome um, quite a few visitors at Christmas this year. And it's great to have quite a few visitors. And um, shout out to Milsey. Hello. How are you? Um, but greeting and welcoming are actually core to this season. We saw the importance of it in the uh, door knocking at the various inns around in the play. We sing about it in carols, let every heart prepare him room. And there is the great greeting to Mary by the angel Gabriel. Hail Mary, Ave Maria, greetings favoured one. And on a, on a side note, I do wonder what it may have been like for Mary to be greeted by her cousin Elizabeth, in the way that she was in the first chapter of Luke's Gospel, which we, we didn't hear today, but it's there. She's greeted with, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And there's a little artwork in the order of service today which shows how one very gifted artist imagines that scene. Because things might have changed quite a bit nowadays, but being an unmarried mother could be a matter of life and death in Mary's social and historic context. She was probably um, publicly shamed and even threatened with violence as the evidence of what people regarded as her faithlessness to God's law was showing forth more and more every day as the child in her group. But she comes to Elizabeth, her cousin, and finds that she's not only accepted and welcomed, but she's praised for her faithfulness to her part in God's plan. And her child is declared to be a blessing. I can only imagine that as being a very wonderful, healing moment, a joyful moment, like is captured in that artwork. But aside from the, the pastoral impact of those very powerful words of greeting, there are echoes of language that was used also of other Hebrew women that played a vital part in God's work. It teases that what was happening in Mary with Jesus was a continuation of something that had long been in the works. Old promises of God were stirring here. For Mary, only months had gone by since she encountered the angel Gabriel. But the hope, the hope of what Jesus would bring to the world had been gestating for a long time. A long time. I guess being in a, in a time of waiting um, an expectation over four weeks of Advent is, is nothing, really, in the grand scheme of things. No comparison with the vast, millennia-long process that God worked in and through to bring to birth the one who would show us most clearly the likeness and the will of God. God's redeeming work is 
a very long, long story. And like Mary's pregnancy, like every pregnancy, it takes time to see what will be. Which brings us to an effortlessly smooth transition in the sermon towards what will be. What will be. I was speaking with someone very recently this week. He's probably in his mid-70s of age. And he said he wished he had been born 10 years later. I asked why. And he said that he thought the next 10 years would be history making, that massive changes were brewing, whether for good or ill he was not sure, but he was curious to see what was stirring. And thinking, thinking back on 2020, you probably know what he means. It feels like the story of our world, of God's world, is starting a new chapter, or at least that a chapter is coming to an end and there's a cliffhanger in sight and we're not sure which way things will go. And for some, that can be a bit scary. It can be a bit scary. It can. But to quote the first letter of John, perfect love casts out fear. And quite fundamentally, I trust that God does hold 2020 within the grand arc of God's story. That ultimately things won't fall into a meaningless anarchy, but rather the message of God with us still powerfully calls our attention to a relational reality and a promise that is pregnant with abounding hope. So all things considered, a, a question it may be good to ask is, what is God bringing to birth now in us as individuals and as a community? How will the hope that is given in Christ lead us into the future and shape our mission? Because God is always present, always ready to prompt us along to a promising future, regardless of people working uh, with the grain of God's reality or against it. God was there, present with Mary and Elizabeth in ancient hopes finding fruition, causing the unborn to dance for joy, and then the mother probably crying out a bit in discomfort. God was present in bringing relief to a young mother, bearing the weight of the world in herself, all just in a remote corner of the Roman Empire, poor, <coughs> disadvantaged, not where we might expect, but God was there. It, it is a really extraordinary thing, it is, that for all of our foibles and scandals and limitations and weaknesses, God still asks humanity to take responsibility for what God is working at in the world. Think about that. Think about that, that God always has been and is here, in Cannington, and the surrounding areas, with people of all different kinds that grace Christ's church here. Unique, gifted people. People that are struggling along in ways that we can't know, but we know are made and loved by God in an unbreakable love all the same. God is here, never alone, never abandoned, the Lord always with us. We may have to 
stretch our vision wider than is comfortable at times, especially if the birth pangs are hard for what God is bringing forth. Or we struggle to see how God's presence is guiding us exactly, especially in a year like this one. But the light with which we see the world is always shining. Jesus Christ, the Lord, is and always has been and will be with us. The Lord be with you. Amen.